Have you ever wanted more new bucks than you could ever reasonably need in Slime Rancher? Then allow me to take you on a tour through my ranch that nests me roughly 1 million new bucks every 3 minutes. Now before we get started, I just want to say that this is pretty much endgame only, so don't expect this to help out with 7z. You'll probably be done, or close to done it, by the time you've unlocked all the teleporters and drones required. Okay, so this video will be broken down into three parts. First I'll show the strat at full speed, then I'll slow it down and explain my teleporter and drone placements. Lastly, I'll go over the layout of gardens and corrals in each zone. So the basic premise behind this strat is you're going to wake up, use teleporters to run a loop through each zone in your ranch while watering your drones, and then sleep and repeat. That's pretty much it. The drones do the rest. You can see my new bucks going up in the bottom left as I profit off their hard work while doing pretty much next to nothing. Let's slow it down now and take a look at the drones. Each of them are set up with two programs. They're either delivering food to the auto feeders or plorts to the plort market. Which reminds me, you'll need market links in all zones for this strat as well. Now as for drone and teleporter placement, there were three main things I considered when trying to save time. First, I obviously wanted to cover as short a distance as possible. Secondly, I found that certain gadget locations were close enough to water two drones at once, cutting down the loop time further. This first zone is an example of this. My third trick was to have teleporters oriented so that I was instantly aiming at a drone upon entering the area where possible. You'll see an example of this in the second zone. With all of these time saves, I'm able to make the loop in about 20 seconds. Alright, I'll slowly run through the locations of everything now. For market links, you pretty much just want to have them anywhere near the corrals so that the drone's travel time is reduced. And here's that example I was talking about of being able to instantly water the drone without having to move at all. So this zone, these drones were kind of weird because they were the only ones that seemed to perform worse when I had both programs attached. So instead I've just got one dedicated to plorts and the other dedicated to food and it seemed to work out pretty well. This location was pretty interesting as well, so the drones are pretty far away from their corrals, but in theory it shouldn't matter too much because they'll rarely be back at their stations anyway. So I chose this location because it's the quickest in terms of watering them and getting to the next teleporter. It also has this wonderful pond that you can use to refill when you're farming for longer sessions. Okay, let's take a look at the slimes and their food. I just want to start off by saying that you should avoid having Largos that require meat as their favorite food since drones are much slower at collecting them compared to non-moving fruit or veggies. In this main area, I've got four corrals with tangled mosaic slimes and four gardens with silver parsnips. Note that the gardens are fully maxed out aside from scare slimes and the corrals have everything except music boxes and solar shields. I've got around 12 Largos in each corral. At the lab, I've got three corrals with dervish mosaic slimes and two gardens with silver parsnips. In the grotto, I've got three corrals with dervish saber slimes and two gardens with prickly pears. In the overgrowth, I've got two corrals with quantum honey slimes and two gardens with minty mangoes. In the lagoon, I've got two corrals with boom dervish slimes and two gardens with prickly pears. In the wilds, I've got four corrals with mosaic saber slimes and two gardens with silver parsnips. At Mochi's Manor, I've got two corrals with rad hunter slimes and two gardens with oka okas. And lastly, in Victor's Zone, I've got two corrals with crystal mosaic slimes and two gardens with silver parsnips. And that's pretty much it. As I said at the beginning, there's a fair bit of setup and investment needed for this farming method, but if you enjoy watching meaningless numbers go up, it's probably your best bet. I'm sure there are still improvements that can be made, but I'll leave that to someone smarter than me. Thanks for watching.